sponsored by LearnGD.com. Learn graphics and digital video design online. Real in the field won't be flopping on them. Nice, nice, nice that. Right they were jocking that shit. My boy, they get nothing but props. Oh, for real? The whole crowd. Had the whole crowd jumping, fool. Because yesterday was 420 right here in downtown. Uh-huh. So they made a big deal at every, every pretty much medical clinic, you know, dispensary. And a good homie of mine, actually a group of homies, they own pretty much like the main, main crap one in downtown LA. Uh-huh. So DJ Quick was right there. He did a camp, you know. He performed fucking um, about two or three tracks. He did tonight. Uh-huh. He did a few other tracks, dog. Another day, another dollar. Hmm. But like I said about that motherfucking track, I'm about to bless tonight. I hate it, boy. If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. Like that. And actually, what I said is, uh, you'll see, you see. I don't want to burn it, but. I'm a, you know what, Louis? I'm going to be honest. I'm old school. You know, I, you know, hey, give me that. You know, angel baby, I'm your puppet. That's me, you know? <laughs> but uh, this rap stuff, you know, is that their music? Is that what he wants and that's what he likes? More power to him. I'll support him. Whatever support I could give him, you know, hey, I'm there for him. There was, one time I was going to go to San Pedro. They were having a big gig there. He was going to sing and stuff, and I wanted to go, but I couldn't make it last minute. And You know what I mean? And, and, and that was my chance to go see him because I never seen him perform. You know, I heard his music, you know, and it don't sound like him. Because, because, man, that's good, you know. I go, when are you going to make a sound like about your dad? You know, so. <laughs> but uh, I support him, Louis, you know. I mean, I mean, because I know that's what he's good at. I mean, and, and I mean, everybody that I speak to, they say, oh, yeah, you know. I mean, he, he, you know, he's, you know, it's chingon, you know. And I'm sure his, you know, the other guys también, you know, not just Danny, you know, they all, it's a team, you know. So, you know, yeah, I wish him all the power and. Uh, the best of luck and you know I hope they succeed you know make do something about this what they're you know what they're striving for because I know I mean when my dad was alive Louis and even after he passed Danny would lock in Danny would use a lot of my old of my music I mean I don't know if he uses it in his but a lot of my old music and he would lock himself in the room for hours Go, what, you know what are you doing you have his little CD player and he'll be writing his music to the beat of, of, the, of my old school music. And I go, God, you know, I mean, I go, you're pretty, you're pretty talented, you know, to do your music, to do the lyrics, you know, out of, you know, listening to my music that I, from my time or our music, you know, all those veteranos, you know. I mean, you know, doing, I mean, he, that's how Danny, he would sit there for hours, man. And yeah, and, well, but I guess that's how you become successful. And that's why I guess his music is, you know, everybody likes his music, you know, because what, is, what he expresses when he, when he sings, it's all true, you know. Because I know, I know Danny's family oriented, so I know a lot of, he uses a lot of, you know, in his music, you know, he expresses it, you know, so. But yeah, no, that, yeah, I mean, I remember that, because, you know, he'll be, hey, I want my CD back, I want to hear it, you know. No, Dad, wait, hold on, don't bother me. You know, he'll be with his notebook, they're page after page, and, you know, oh, there's no sound good, you know, pura basura, they, yeah, he, he took time. That, I could vouch, because I've been there when I seen him. Uh, so he'd lock himself in the room. He didn't want nobody bothering him, not even his father. And he'd be there just, and my grandpa, after my dad passed away, he will go into my dad's room, and he'll sit there in the same chair where my dad sat, and play music and start writing. You know, I guess his music and stuff, so. That's, you know, where Danny got his talent. I mean, he's talented in that, so. I wish I had that. You think I know it's puro volver, volver, you know, so, <laughs> so, but, yeah. The music thing, that's funny you said that, how it exactly, exactly got started. I used to f- around with beats that were already um, not even made, not even blank beats, sh- that. I would hear songs, and, and say the song would have a couple seconds where he's not rapping, I would use that and start filming that. Then when I went up north, um, and this was pretty much where I had started really getting onto that shit, was in the city of Whittier and Uptown Whittier and Whittier Valle Rocco's hood. 
Um, that's when I lived with my first daughter. My mom was helping us out financially, and I used to you go into the restroom and you know get my smoke on and start f-ing with shit that. Then when I went, I was already you know got the ball rolling. I went up north, and pretty much hold on to take it back. Um, I grew up listening to Spice One, Brother Lynch, which is Black Market, uh, Mr. Doctor X rated. Um, not just uh, R.B. Alpasi, Snoop Dogg, of course, Dr. Dre, N.W.A., all that. But to get back what I'm, what I wanted to point out to you is that a lot of the rap that we grew up, me, when I say we, is me and my peers, which are homeboys or my casual friends. We grew up listening to a lot of music that came from up north. You know, even though I got no love for Norteños, it ain't 14. It's all about the one, three, the 13, the 13. That's where I chose to live, you know? Long story short, <clears throat> I know that a lot of good artists came from up there. So when I went up there, um, I was tripping out on the whole environment because up there, the Southsiders that lived up there that were claiming the sur, which was already up north, and I got nothing but love from, and I showed them nothing but love and how to be, were really behind schedule. They were still wearing things that I was wearing, and this was already the 2000s. They're wearing things that I was wearing in the early 90s, in the mid 90s. I'm over here with the new Stilo. I had Hainas telling me, I never thought that I would ever be with a fucking Sureño in my life in the South Sider, because I came with a different Stilo. I'm a real South Sider. I was born and raised on, in Southern California, you know? So I was able to, to show them a lot of different things, you know? So long story short, of course, I ain't gonna kick it with no busters. I don't give a fuck even if I would like to suck And even if they're the only motherfuckers that have weed, I don't give a fuck. It ain't fucking. So, of course, I'm gonna go fucking look and spread my word around. And I ended up hooking up with some GFCs, g- Gangster Family Crips. These were Crips that were from up there, Northern Cali. When I represented myself as a Sureño and all that, he goes, feed man. Since one of the OG that was right there had been to prison, he knew a lot of good Southside homies, so he showed me nothing but love. He's the one that full blown took it to the next level because I used to like weed and I still, you know, do my thing. Long story short, they're smoking a at a table of some. The only thing that was asked is, check this out. You want to hit that? Fine. You gotta spit some. So there's like about say. Eight people at a table smoking two blunts, three blunts. They got beats playing. So when the blunt passes to you and you fucking, you finish exhaling and passing it to the next guy, you got to be spitting your shit until that guy's done. Then when you're when he's done, that's when you pass it to him. So that's how it got started on the next level because even one of the cats that was there had rapped and done songs with X rated which is a homeboy that's a good cat that I grew up listening to. He had done music with him and, you know, it was, it was a good thing. So that's what had put me really full blown, got my key started on the whole thing. You know, even though I had always loved music and I'd always had it in my soul, nobody told me, oh, you should do this. Nah, it was me on my own doing it, you know. Pretty much at this point, um, everyone, um, was I'm not gonna say full blown doing their own thing, but everyone had their own projects in line. Besides that, they might have been doing a song here, a song there, or an album over here with this person. Little by little, it was cracking. So, jokes and siphon, which are they're both my boys. I'm the one that pretty much collabed them, connected them, and introduced them, and was able to vouch for each and one of them, telling them like, "Look, he's cool in the house." Don't worry about it. Nothing gets stolen. Look, he's a good homeboy. Nothing, you know. When I was in my accident, um, before my accident, I used to be nonstop in the studio doing songs for the f- of it. I didn't give a f- if I wasn't getting paid for it or if someone needed me to do a song. I would just do it just for the f- of it because I love music, you know. So I had songs collecting, and Big Folks and Siphon were doing out an album already, and I had came out of the, of the hospital finally in about mid-February of 2010, and um, I was able to talk to them 
like, hey, well, how do you guys feel if I join you guys in the whole collab in the album, the collaboration, and I could add, and I have a couple of good songs to, to add to the list. I'm not gonna just put some whatever songs, I'm gonna put some, what we call bangers, which is fucking heat, heat rock, some fucking ass tracks, you know? So that's how I ended up jumping on the, the, the bandwagon, pretty much, you could say. You know, pitched in Feria, and we're getting the album pressed up. Pretty much, you know, got off shots for taking the time to either watch this video or even listen to one of my songs. And get nothing but love, you know? And just know that I'm a real individual from the streets. I ain't this fake cat that, oh, you know what? I turned 21. Let me join a gang now. Nah, my sh that I speak about and I rap about is real. It's from my heart. And, you know, that's how I can let my fans know. Got nothing but love and respect. Stay up and stay bumping that gangsta. Danny started coming around. He was kind of like the last one to, to show up, you know, for some reason. And uh, um, we started doing his solo album maybe about three years ago. And I, I had just done like, actually I was just doing features on, for him on some other albums. And then, uh, then he started, we started working on his solo stuff. And right now I'm actually doing his, uh, I have about four tracks on his solo album. So uh, that's how we became, uh, we, we've we known each other and then we became friends, you know, because I'm real tight with Charlie Roe and everybody else, you know, and because um, we do a lot of work together, you know. I do a lot of stuff for King, so we spend, you know, sometimes 12, 14 hours in here and just so you get to know somebody, you know. And I got to know Danny and his story and his car crash and everything else in between. And, uh, you know, heard horrible news, and <clears throat> when he finally came back to the studio, they were telling me that it was going to be a little rough, which I don't recall it being rough. I mean, I remember him pretty much nailing it, you know, and him being back to normal. So, uh, but he made a quick recovery for what he went through, man. So, I'm super impressed about that, you know. Danny has the ultimate West Coast swag, straight up. Ain't nobody like him, you know. He's a very talented guy. He was actually just here a while ago, so. <laughs> That's Danny. Like it. He gets it, but once he gets him done, man, he's back there. He's behind the mic just spitting fire, so. As long as it comes out good and we have a solid product, take, the, take all the time you want, you know. But, yeah, he's super talented. And, um, of course, my my I didn't sound right. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Danny, uh, Jasper, a.k.a. Jasper, is, uh, he, he's, he's still doing it, man. He's going to be around for a long time, and he's slowly gaining a bigger uh, popularity as, uh, the, as the more D-Solace beats he gets. <laughs> we got some feet, heat coming. Keep a lookout. What's happening? It's your boy Jasper Local from that Charlie Roll. Posted right here with the homie Scythe. And uh, just keeping the ball rolling, dog. Keeping it moving. For you motherfuckers out there feeling the music. That's right. Gracias. You know, and um, we're doing a little mixtape. The homie Scythe is about to drop one. And uh, me and Jokes got our solos coming out in a few months. So um, be looking out for that. Go ahead and let them know. A little song, some on that, dog. Of course, Jazz going to be on there. And then me and the, uh, the homie Feisty. Jokes, we're working on a new Charlie Roll project, so we're keeping the ball rolling, dog. What's up, Chino G, Little Minor? Stay strong, homie. Be seeing you guys soon, dog. That's right, Louie. Gracias, homie. Stay up, dog.